Josh of Severe Weather, thank you guys for joining me for this special presentation. I'm here to talk about what is to be expected for this upcoming tropical season here, the 2024 Atlantic hurricane season, less than 90 days away now. And unfortunately, it looks like a very concerning forecast. And I'm going to break down uh, what is going to go into this forecast for you guys here. Uh, but this season has the potential to not only be very destructive, but to be a record breaking season. Uh, I am predicting 30 total storms uh, this hurricane season in the Atlantic. Uh, that would tie us for a record. 16 hurricanes would just slightly break the record. Seven major hurricanes, which would tie the record. And an ACE, which stands for accumulated um, cyclone energy of 250, which puts us in the top two to three. And uh, unfortunately, in the Gulf of Mexico, uh, there is concern that we will have not just one, but multiple major hurricanes affecting the Gulf Coast region. Uh, and there's a threat for hurricanes as well up the East Coast, Florida, the Caribbean, um, the Southwestern Gulf, and even Bermuda and the Central Atlantic. A very active season expected. Uh, here is why. Let me get myself out of the way for you guys here. We are transitioning from an El Nino this winter into likely a La Nina by the time we get to summer and fall. And La Ninas typically lead to more active Atlantic hurricane seasons. What they do is they lessen the amount of wind shear that can be uh, detrimental to tropical systems. With less shear, we likely have more systems that can survive over a longer period of time. Uh, and we are going to likely see this transition begin here this spring and potentially uh, be completed by the time we get later into the summer and fall, August, September, and October, which are typically our most active uh, months of the Atlantic hurricane season. Here's a look at modeling, which kind of shows this transition in place. And I'm going to move myself again for you guys here. But um, you can see that um, by the time we get to late spring and summer, we are down to about neutral and then more likely heading into a La Nina here by the end of summer and fall. This is actually not unusual to see a strong El Nino go into a stronger La Nina and see the bottom drop out in these temperature anomalies. So this is nothing unusual. What is more unusual is what I'm going to show you in a little bit, and that's uh, the ocean water temperatures. Here's another forecast which shows pretty much all of our major reliable model guidance showing us by May heading into a uh, kind of a transition towards a La Nina. And then by the time we get to June and July, likely a La Nina. And uh, how strong it gets is still to be determined. Um, sometimes the stronger La Ninas can start to put a halt on activity, but we're going to counter that with warmer water. So again, I don't know if it's going to make that big of a difference. This is a graphic from the Weather Channel showing where we stand in an El Nino. And last, uh, last hurricane season was about twice the average uh, what you would expect during an El Nino. And the reason why is that water temperatures were extremely warm, a very unique situation. Uh, La Nina and neutral seasons are typically a lot more active. Uh, and the reason why is that we have lower wind shear than you would in an El Nino. The wind shear makes things hostile. In the neutral phase, we don't see that stronger wind shear. And in the La Nina phase, we actually see even less wind shear, but cooler water temperatures than a neutral. So these two are very similar. Uh, with a strong, with a warmer water temperatures, though, we will likely see this go well above the average. Here's a look at what's going on now. TropicalTibbets.com, you can see record warmth across most of the Atlantic Ocean. And in the last week, we are starting to see um, that cooler water being upwelled all the way to the ocean surface here across the eastern Pacific as La Nina forms. You can see over the last seven days leading up to Saturday the 9th, um, that drop in temperature of almost five degrees Celsius with respect to average. Average water temperatures are slowly climbing, uh, but we are seeing the actual temperature at the ocean surface drop off significantly. This is the beginnings of that transition, which you would expect. Uh, more concerning, though, uh, than the La Nina is the water temperatures over the Atlantic. We were in an El Nino last year with above average temperatures. As a result, we had 20 storms. Fortunately, the major storms did mostly remain out to sea, with the exception of uh, Hurricane Idalia, which made it up to major uh, strength here briefly before hitting the Florida Panhandle. Uh, this year, the Gulf is running hotter than it did last year. And with the transition to La Nina, we are going to see less wind shear over the Gulf of Mexico, meaning uh, the ingredients are very much in place for potentially major hurricanes. We saw this in 2020, we saw it in 2005. Uh, pretty much every year recently, we've had something major in the Gulf in the last five to six years. I don't see any reason why this year is gonna be any different. 
Here's a look at our anomalies and you can see um, the Atlantic main development region running over a degree above average Celsius, so over two degrees average Fahrenheit and remaining there through the winter time. What's a bigger concern is what's going on in the Gulf of Mexico. In just the last week, we have seen nearly neutral sea surface temperatures with respect to average, so pretty close to average, jump up very considerably to almost a degree Celsius above average. Look at how steep that line is. I don't know if that trend is going to continue uh, all spring long, but it is very concerning to see a transition like this happen so quickly as we're fading out of El Nino. Here's a look at how things were in notable hurricane seasons past. And this chart shows you guys um, what our uh, sea surface temperatures were with respect to average. In the year of Hurricane Hugo, most of the Atlantic was actually below average in March but transitioned to a bit above average with the exception of the waters off the Carolina coast. You can see they were a little bit warmer than average. Uh, fast forward 10 years to 1999, a very active season. And you can see still it was pretty cool with respect to average, almost climatologically average in March, uh, heading up into that active season. 2005 was kind of the season to beat here. Uh, that was the year of Katrina, Rita, Wilma. Um, we did see the Gulf of Mexico was running very warm, but the southwestern Atlantic was not. Um, this season is starting to look a lot like that season, believe it or not. That was a, an extreme season here, 2005. That was the uh, standard bearer for number of storms until we got to 2020. Flash forward 2016, the year of uh, storms like Hurricane Matthew, and you can see uh, much warmer water temperatures off the east coast in March of that season. Uh, the next year, 2017, that was the year of Hurricane Irma and Hurricane Maria. You can see much of the Atlantic was running above average, um, although the Gulf was a little bit below average in March. 2018 was the year of Hurricanes Florence and Matthew. We can't forget those storms, but you can see the Gulf was on fire in March as well, much like it is now. Uh, the main development region of the Atlantic was closer to average. 2020, the most number of storms on record. And you can see the Caribbean, the Southwest Atlantic, all were much above average. Interestingly, the Gulf was not yet in March, but take a look at what was going on off of Africa. Um, positive AMO, uh, that is a, a sign of water, very warm water that was spreading northward, allowing a lot more of those storms, which weren't a threat to land, to form. Uh, and that's why we had 30 named storms. And then take a look at 2024. Everything's on fire in the Atlantic and the Gulf. And that is the reason for my extremely concerning forecast. Here's a look at where things are likely to be as we head into the peak of hurricane season. This is the NMME model. You can see strong La Nina here. Those are the blues, the cooler than average temperatures, very warm with respect to average temperatures across the Atlantic, very warm in the Caribbean, still much above average across the Gulf and the near waters of the West Atlantic, which would be unprecedented. Here's a look at the European seasonal forecast. This is for July, August, and September. So not even quite into October yet. And you can see water temperatures expected to be one to two degrees Celsius above average off the East Coast, as well as in the Northeastern Gulf, two to three degrees above average Celsius over the Caribbean and over the main development region of the Central Atlantic Ocean. And when you get water that warm, you have more fuel in place for a storm like Otis to form and to rapidly intensify leading up to landfall. Again, this was in the Pacific last year um, when we had an El Nino. We had the conditions in the Pacific last year that we're likely to see in the Atlantic this year. And we saw a storm go from 80 to 165 here in just a matter of 11 hours. Something like that very well looks like it could happen in the Atlantic Basin this season. So I'm not trying to, not trying to scare people and give them storm anxiety, but I'm just telling you right now that conditions definitely favor something like this happening. And we need to be preparing for a storm that is within a day of landfall that could very quickly explode stronger than expectations. That is my biggest concern, rapid intensification. Here's a look at where uh, we stand with the threat for who's gonna potentially see bigger um, amounts of rain this season, more storms. And you can see in 2020, that was the year of Laura and Delta uh, and all the storms here, we saw much above average action in the North Central Gulf, as well as over the South Central Caribbean and over the East Atlantic. That was 2020. Take a look at this year. We'll start in the Pacific, but I'm gonna get you back here into the Atlantic. And you can see here, um, it's gonna be wet towards Mexico, uh, less active season over the Western Pacific. And then as we head farther East, you can see it could be a very active season here off the Mexican and Central Pacific, uh, Central American Pacific coast. And then take a look at the Atlantic. 
And we are looking very similar to 2020 here with the wetter than average set up here across the Gulf of Mexico over the Southwest Caribbean and across the main development region. So this right here tells us through September that there's gonna be more action than average and quite a bit more action than average over the Caribbean, over the Eastern and Central Gulf and over the main development region. This doesn't even include October and November. The model doesn't go out that far yet, uh, but I don't see any reason why it's gonna change on a dime here by the time we get to October. Looking at climatology, and again, this is an unprecedented season, one where we have not had this kind of warmth in the Atlantic. Um, you can see um, this is the area where more storm frequency has occurred. And uh, two areas of, of great concern are off the southeast coast, including the Bahamas, and over the Northwest Caribbean and Central Gulf of Mexico, including Louisiana, Mississippi, and Alabama. Um, the analogs show that these areas will likely have more storms than average, and really it only takes one storm to cause a problem, but when you have more storms than average, that just kind of exasperates things. So a very active season expected. Uh, looking at the ACE chart, accumulated cyclone energy, I am predicting 250. We've only had two seasons get to that. Uh, 2005, that was the year of Katrina, and 1933, and again, this is pre-satellite era, so we don't really exactly know um, how much action there was here but just goes to show that you go back over nine years and there were more active seasons and before 1851 there could have been as well we just don't know uh so again this is unprecedented in our record keeping time frame not necessarily historically though uh, but certainly it's going to be a very active season here's a look at the can sips forecast for ace and you can see it's off the charts here with our sea surface temperature um, when we had our warmest um, months in the Atlantic, we saw our highest amounts of ACE, and these lined up pretty well with La Nina seasons. Um, the fact that we are two degrees above the hottest season means the ACE forecast has to be higher than average, um, just based on this factor alone. This is from Wikipedia. I know I got really scientific for you guys here, but predicting a 250 ACE index forecast not only gets us over 65% of the average, which is between 73 and 126, but it's basically off the charts. The season that again was the most active was 1933. That had 20 named storms. 2005 was just behind it. That was the year of Katrina and Wilma. Those ate up a lot of energy. 28 named storms on that season, 15 hurricanes, seven major hurricanes. And this season looks to be very much in line with that season from what I am seeing now. And if you go back over the last several years, since 2016, we've been above average pretty much every season with the exception of 2022, which was near average. So you have to go back nine seasons to have a below average season. With the water temperatures as warm as they are now, there's just really nothing to me that shows that we're gonna be below average. Uh, very likely above average and a decent chance extremely active. 2022 even was um, our least active season here over the last nine, and that was the year of Hurricane Ian. So that just goes to show you guys, no matter what the whole season looks like, one storm can suck up a lot of that energy and cause a lot of destruction. And here's where our most storms in a year were. 2020, we had almost half of our 30 storms were hurricanes. Half of those were majors. This year, I'm predicting something very similar. Uh, so we're going to be right up there with 2005 and 2020. And, you know, it's certainly possible it could be even worse. Um, here is the European seasonal forecast for accumulated cyclone energy. 70% of average here, 70% uh, above the average. The average is 1.0. It is predicting 1.7. Um, and that is only through the month of September. That does not include October and November. So off to a hot start here through the first half of hurricane season and just beyond across the Atlantic. The Pacific will be slightly above average as well in the east, 10% higher than average. And the prediction in the Western Pacific typhoon season is that will be about half of average. Clearly a classical La Nina setup here where less active in the Western Pacific, near active or near average in the Eastern Pacific and much above average in the Atlantic. Here's a look at our, our forecast here just through September alone puts us basically off the charts here, potentially up to 240% um, of average if you go with one standard deviation. Uh, the range is big, but near average to uh, perhaps 2.4 times the average here through the month of September. And if La Nina continues to build, there's no reason October or November shouldn't be just as busy as well. Uh, here is a look at how we did um, last year. And the European, or I'm sorry, this is where we're looking at number of storms for this year. Um, last year, we did have a forecast of 17 around this time. We had ended up with 20. Uh, but the forecast is for 17 named storms through September. 
that does not include October or November when I'm expecting that there's going to be at least 10 more storms uh, due to the fact that the water temperature is going to be very warm. Bath water feeds into more storms. In the Eastern Pacific, 15 named storms are expected through September, again, not including October, and in the Western Pacific, below average at 12. Uh, the number in green here is the average, so you can see below average in the Western Pacific, slightly above average in the Eastern Pacific, and much above average in the Atlantic, according to the European, which actually did pretty well last season. People looked at it, scratched their heads, and said, why are you predicting 20 storms if we're in an El Nino? And the reason why is the water temperatures were very warm, and that seemed to win out the battle between shear and water temperatures. This year, they're very warm and low shear, so there is no battle. There's, there's nothing stopping it from being a very active year. Um, this is the seasonal forecast, and this, again, through September, so not even including October or November, 2020, you can see where things ended up much above what was being predicted. 2021 was a little bit above average. 2022 was less than average, but we had an active second season. Last year, we were above the average forecast. If we continue that trend, then there's nothing stopping us from going off the chart here through the month of September. Uh, here's a look at how many of these could become hurricanes. And the prediction through the month of September is 8.7. And I believe October, November will give us several more storms, uh, potentially 15 hurricanes, as we still have about 40% of that season to go after this forecast ends. Here's a look at where we're standing here. And again, you can see um, this predicted hurricane forecast is higher than what we've seen in any of previous forecasts and even higher than where we were in 2020 at the end of September. Remember 2020, a lot of the action happened in October and November, and we only had eight hurricanes through the end of September. This year's forecast is predicting almost nine, so it's already higher than where we were during that month, only a little bit below where we ended up in 2005 at 10 named hurricanes through the end of September. Here's where things could be a little bit less active or more active. Blue indicates less active than the average, so the Western Pacific should have a less active season, but the red indicates more action than average. Uh, right here over um, the Arabian Sea region, as well as north of Japan, south of Korea, over the main development region of the Atlantic, off the East Coast, and right here off the Louisiana coast. So all of these are signs of what are going to be more action than what you would typically expect during a hurricane season through the month of September. Again, we don't have October or November listed. And again, this gives us our forecast of 30 named storms, 16 hurricanes through the end of the year, seven major hurricanes, and an ace of 250. And an enhanced threat for named storms uh, over the Central Atlantic, including Bermuda, an enhanced threat over the northern parts of the Caribbean, Cuba, the Bahamas, and over the southeast coast, including Florida. And the area I'm most concerned about would be over the Central Gulf, southwestern gulf and northwestern caribbean even including nicaragua which we remember was an extreme season in 2020. so uh, i'm going to have another update in about a month as we get that october forecast in as we watch this el nino come to an end but i appreciate you all's time today um, again i really hate to scare people but this is very concerning i'm not the only one predicting this to be a super active season there's plenty of other folks that are uh, but i want to give you guys the science behind it as a degree meteorologist so um, if you enjoyed this video, please consider becoming a subscriber. I thank you all for your time. Now is the time to prepare for the season. And as much as I want to predict something, we have no control over what's going to happen. That's completely up to God. And I am a Christian, and I give all the glory to God every day. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And I pray that's your situation as well, that you are a believer and that you believe in God, knowing the promises that he has given those of us who have chosen to believe in him. Uh, but nonetheless, um, I just give God all the glory. I thank him. We can't control the weather. I don't even try to be perfect. I just want to do my best in making sure folks are prepared. I pray that you are preparing now because it is going to be a super active season. Hope you all have a great day and we'll catch up with you again soon. God bless.